A couple months ago, I did a video basically titled Manjaro and its developers can kiss my you know what. It's right here. Most of you all have probably seen it. If you haven't seen it, at the end of this video, I'll put it in the suggested list. That way you can take a view at it if you would like to. It basically broke down how when you had ideas or you had suggestions on how to fix problems with Manjaro and you submitted that to them, you were generally met with disdain. You were told, we don't need your help. We got this, just go away. And that really irritated me. And I wasn't the only person out there having this problem. I had a lot of viewers that actually gave me feedback and said they had ran into this as well. Well, I got a notification earlier this week when I was at work on my phone and it was an email. And it was an email from the Manjaro team apologizing for basically the way I was treated. And I did send back another email to tell them I'm not the only one. And this should be dealt with on the personal level, not just with somebody that has a YouTube channel. Now, I know I've only got coming up on 11,000 subscribers, but it definitely reached somebody and they reached back out to me. And I did receive a response to that that stated they were going to try to do better in the community and try to work more with the people as opposed to just shutting it down. Now, having said that, I also know as a creator and I also know with somebody that gets a lot of comments on a YouTube channel that sometimes it can be overwhelming on my end to try to answer everybody or try to help everybody. And if I had a bigger team, it would probably be easier, but it's just me. So we're going to take a quick look at the newest release of Manjaro. That's what we're doing today on eBuzz Central. Before we start the video today, I just want to remind everybody, whether you're a supporter of the channel or a viewer of the channel, to zip on over to my Patreon page. You don't have to be a patron to take a look at this, but if you scroll down when you go to the page, there is a video down here called 10,000 Subscribers Patrons Only. That is an awesome video. You need to watch it. I'm doing something really special for all of you that support me and for those of you who could become supporters in the future. So if you get a chance, when you get done watching this video, zip on over there. Like I said, scroll down to where it says 10,000 subscribers, and that's the video you want to watch. And while I have you all, I want to tell you thank you so much for helping me reach 10,000 subscribers. Never thought I would be here. You guys have done so much for this channel, and I look forward to continually providing content that you like and welcoming new viewers to my channel. Once again, thank you guys so much for helping me reach 10,000 subscribers. You really don't know what it means to me. So now let's get to the video. And it has been a while since I've been to their website. It's been over two months, but I can say right now that they do have a new website. It looks pretty well laid out. They've always had a decent looking website. You got your blog, your forum, your wiki, your download software, hardware, merchandise, donate, sponsors, partners, and it just lets you know up here it has no adverts, licenses, or fees. It respects user privacy. Let us handle your next OS integration. Partner with us. Manjaro Cloud Solution. And the running in shells. And then that's pretty much it down there. And then you can come back up top if you want to download. You can go to download. And then you can choose your edition. It looks like you have Plasma, XFCE, GNOME. And then you got the Manjaro ARM team. You've got the GNOME Desktop, Plasma, Mate. Minimal, Sway, XFCE, and then, of course, your communities are now listed. I like this because prior, you had to go up and click on a button and slide down to community, and then it would bring you over to a separate page. So you've got Budgie, Cinnamon, i3, Sway, Mate, Manjaro Docker, and then your Manjaro Manual. So that's a quick look at their updated website. And before we get into the OS, I just do want to apologize. It's been about a week since I posted anything. I wasn't on a vacation or anything like that. Here in the States where I'm located, it's been about 100 to 110 degrees every day with the heat index, and that is hot. And my air conditioning unit went out. So it's been rather hot. I wasn't able to upload anything, but now everything should be back on a track. So I just wanted to apologize for that. And thank you viewers for sticking around and keeping track with me because I have received a couple messages and text messages saying, hey, when are you gonna upload something? What's wrong? Things like that. So. Thank you for reaching out. It was really hard to think of sitting down and doing a video when it was about 100 degrees in the house. So I do apologize, but here we are. 
we're at the newest release of Manjaro's desktop. Now, if you download it, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine, this is the screen you're met with. It just says Manjaro Hello, Rua 21.3.0, which is their newest release. And it's been a little bit since their previous release, so we're going to take a look around and just kind of take a little tour and see about everything that they might have added or changes they might have made. Now, I do want to point out one of the things I do like about Linux distributions in general, not just Manjaro, is a lot of them come with the welcome screen. This is a very nice feature that when you first get into an operating system, it kind of gives you some options right off the bat. With Manjaro, you got documentation, which has a readme, release info, and a wiki. So what I'm going to do here real quick is we're going to go ahead and click on the release info. And it says, since we released Konos end of last year, all our developer teams worked hard to get the next release of Manjaro out. We call it Rua. Now, one thing I do want to point out is this release does feature Calamari's version 3.2 which is partition module has gained more support for Luke's partitions. User modules now has a list of forbidden login and host names to avoid settings that will mess up your install. Now, one thing I do want to point out, I think when I read in the release notes, I'm going to go ahead and open up settings. We're going to go down to about, and let's go ahead and switch this to a dark mode. Now let's apply, come down here to about this system. And it comes with KDE Plasma 5.24.5. Now, what makes no sense to me is the last release of Manjaro in December, which would have been 21.2. So we waited almost six months for the newest release to come out. KDE has been tested. It works well in KDE Neon, and it works well in a couple other distributions I've looked at, is if you're going to have a major release of your OS, why not push it off seven days, 14 days, and just have it drop with KDE 5.25? That's the newest and greatest KDE. That makes no sense to me. That's still one of the decisions I believe that Manjaro makes for themselves. I'm going to have people in the comments say, well, it's because KDE is brand new. KDE 5.25 needs to be tested. It needs to be done. It's been being tested. And quite honestly, for the sake of having my system more stable, I would have rather waited two weeks, four weeks for Manjaro to drop their newest release and come out with the latest and greatest 5.25 KDE as opposed to in a month or so going in, updating, and have something break. That's just my personal opinion. If you disagree with me, let me know in the comments below. I just think that's a mistake on Manjaro's part. But like I said, they did reach out. They did apologize for some of the things that I've been through as a user and hopefully they do that with the community. But at another time, this is probably a time when it was more appropriate for them to do what they wanted to do as opposed to doing what the user wanted to do. So that's my opinion. If you disagree, let me know in the comments below. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Then we can come back over here and it says the GNOME edition has received a major update to GNOME 42. A new global dark user interface style preference has arrived, this can be used to request that apps use a dark UI style instead of light. The new setting can be found in the new appearance panel in the settings app and is followed by most GNOME apps. Then you've got some GTK info, GNOME 42, latest Plasma 5.24 series. I still think it should have came with the 5.25. Plasma is all about customization, we already know that. Desktop panels are now easier to move around and stick to any edge you want. So we don't have the floating panels because it's not 5.25. And then it's on kernel 5.15 LTS. You've also got the 5.4 LTS and the 5.10 LTS they offer with additional support. And they hope you enjoy the release. So I'm going to close out of this. And we come to the very familiar wallpaper. And I'm starting to get that feeling that Manjaro is getting stuck in a rut. I mean, we've had the same wallpaper now out of the box forever. One good thing about Ubuntu is you do get an updated wallpaper with every new release. I know people are saying I'm sticking and, and hounding on the little things, but it's the little things that make distros stand out. It is the usability, it is the stability, and it's the fresh look. People always want the newest and freshest look, whether it be in a handheld device, on your desktop PC, or on your laptop. And I just think it's time that when we download a new OS, we should have a a fresh wallpaper, something to let us know that, hey, this is different than the previous one. This just looks like another version of Manjaro with the same wallpaper lacking the 5.25 KDE. 
my opinion, of course. You disagree, let me know in the comments below. So what we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna right click, we're gonna to go to configure desktop and wallpaper, and we're gonna go ahead and change that wallpaper because quite honestly, I'm getting sick of seeing it. I've seen it over and over and over again with releases of Manjaro, and it's just getting old. It's getting tired, it's getting worn out, it's time for something new. I'm gonna go ahead and just switch to Milky Way. I know that's old, but it's better than the green that we have in the background. So we're gonna go ahead and click OK. And then that's a little different right there. So if we come down here on the panel, everybody's familiar with the panel. You still got date and time, internet, USB device, battery level, audio, and then of course your drop down terminal. Let's go ahead and drop that down. Let's see if they have NeoFetch installed. And they do. And it lets you know you're on Manjaro Linux. We're running it in VirtualBox, kernel 5.15.48. You're running Bash 5.1.16, Plasma Breeze theme, Icons are Breeze, and I'm running on an Intel i7. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And then down here, you've got your Update Manager, your Manjaro Tray, Matray, or whatever they call it. This right here, just, it's annoying. You may disagree with me. You may like having that. But what it reminds me of is when I was on Windows full-time, and you'd be doing work, and that little notification up on the right would just pop up constantly. Whether it be, hey, your Microsoft OneDrive is almost full. Hey, you need to buy another. This just bugs me. I know it's important to be able to get updates from Manjaro directly to this, but it just gets in the way. I usually disable it or uninstall it, and it's real simple to do. If you've got Matray on your system and you don't want it there, you just go up, click quit, go over to add and remove software, go up here and do a search, go to Matray and hit enter. And when it comes up, you can just trash it and then apply it. And then you don't have to worry about it. But you do have to do something else. You need to go over to settings. Go ahead and bring that up. And when it brings up, just type in auto. And you'll see right here, start up and shut down, auto start applications. And if you come up here, you will see Matray right there. Go ahead and hit the negative and it's gone. Another thing I like to do is I like to go ahead and get that one off there too. You quake. So that way, when I reboot, it won't be down here in my panel. And then I've got a desktop shortcut set up to make it drop down. But that's what I would recommend. So that is removed. So let's go ahead and close that. If you are new to Manjaro, there are a couple things you need to do in here as well. Let's go ahead and clear my tray. Come over to the hamburger menu, click on it, and go to preferences. Go over to the third party. Then you can enable AUR support. Now, if you want to be a user of flat packs, you can go ahead and enable those too. Snaps, I would stay away from, but if you like snaps, you can go ahead and enable those as well. And once you do enable flat packs, go ahead and check for updates. That way, when you do install a flat pack, it will definitely keep you updated on when there is an update to the software that you're using. Then you can come back over to general in your official repositories right here. It'll say use mirrors from. Find the location in the world that you're at, pick the one closest to you, and go with that. Now, I will say this. In my experience in the past with Manjaro, I used to leave it on worldwide, and it seemed to run faster than when I actually picked the United States. Now, it may be different for you. You may be in a part of the world that you do need to change it so that it is quicker. I'm just giving you that little tidbit of information that if you want to try it on worldwide, and then try it on your locale and see which one is faster for you. So we're gonna go ahead and close out of that. And then we'll go ahead and close out of settings. And then when you come back down to the bottom, you got your updates, notifications, your two different desktops you can switch from right here. And then of course, show your desktop. Now, if you right click down here, you can enter edit mode and you can make some adjustments with more options. But because it's not 5.25 KDE, there's not really much you can do different from the previous version of Manjaro. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. And then you can come over here. We can open that up. You've got your applications over here, internet, graphics, games, development, office. It comes with only office desktop suite out of the box. It's a good desktop editor, but if you don't like it, you can uninstall it and install something like a LibreOffice or OpenOffice, whatever you might like. Now, I do want to pop back up here. I want to go back into system settings and let you know KDE is still the most customizable desktop environment you're going to ever use. If you want to, I got a video that I will pin at the end of this video in the suggested, and you can take a look at a video that I did on easy ways to customize KDE because all of these 
different sections right here you can do different things with and really make any KDE distribution your own. You can customize it to exactly the way you like it and make it look and work exactly the way you like it. So I'm going to close out of that. I just wanted to go over Manjaro real quick, show you some of the new things that they've brought to the table, which at this point in time is not much. Uh, you've got the Calamares update for your Luke's partitions. And that's pretty much it, guys. This is a major release of a Linux operating system that promises to be the easiest way to use Arch. And we don't have the newest version of KDE. You do have a new dark theme user interface for GNOME. But I think they really missed it on this one. It's my personal opinion. I'm glad they reached out. I'm glad that they say that they're going to work with the community a little bit more and make things easier to communicate back and forth. But I do believe this major release of Manjaro stumbles mightily. It doesn't come with the new KDE desktop environment, which, yes, it's just released, but they could have been testing it or at least pushed this off for two weeks to a month. So that way they could have come out with the latest and greatest in the KDE. Now, the big question, am I going back to Manjaro? I will not be replacing my Storm OS installs on my business machines. I'm just not going to do it. They work too well. Um, I have too much relying on those machines. My livelihood relies on those machines. And I will not be installing Manjaro on my creative machine either. Manjaro's got a long way to go, I believe. Not only in communication with the community, but in how they do their releases. The release notes that we just saw, if you scroll through them, look at this. Let's go ahead and pull it up. Let's look at the release info. This is a major release. This is 21.3 release of Manjaro. And that's all that's changed. That's it. It's got the updated Calamaris installer. The GNOME edition has a new global dark user interface. The Plasma edition comes with the latest 5.24. You get an update for the Luke's partitions in Calamares. We're still on kernel 5.15. And that's pretty much it. They haven't done anything. So I think, like I said, they've stumbled mightily on this one. I won't be using it on any of my machines. So let me know what you think. Tell me in the comments below. Is Manjaro going to heal its relationship with the community? Do you believe that? And do you believe they should have held off for two weeks to a month? so that they could have included the new version of KDE. I said this about four months ago when I was looking at Ubuntu. Ubuntu seemed stagnated. Ubuntu seemed like there wasn't nothing surprising or new in some of the newer releases. And that's the way I'm starting to feel about Manjaro. At this point in time, as easy as it is to install Arch, I would recommend straight Arch or Storm OS. If you're a newer user and you want to experience Arch and it's easy and it's just there so you can use it as opposed to having to be working on it all the time. Give Storm OS a shot. But I got high hopes. I hope Manjaro fixes its relationship with the community. I hope they start having better releases. But at this point in time, I just think it's the same o same old. If you disagree with me, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, you can become a member right here on YouTube. Become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Buy us a coffee or throw us a donation on PayPal. I would also like to thank today's video sponsors, producer Miss Lop Kralesa, Mitchell Valentino, VIP sponsors Matthew Gower, Antoine Wilk, all excess sponsors are Eugene Lee, Leonard McQueen, Mike DePolis, and sponsors and members Nitrix, Cato Gosted, Chad Jones, and Keith Hefner. If you like today's video, here's a couple more for you to take a look at. I generally cover Linux and open source. Sometimes I might do a little Windows bashing. Once again, thank you for watching my video and I will see you in the next video.